Do you know, I'm just sitting here thinking before I push record today. I have a 17-year-old daughter now. Like, seriously, where has the time gone? It's just went by so quick. Hello guys, welcome back to the Moor Army Podcast for another week. As I just said there before I played the lovely intro music, I have I have firstly and I have a 17 year old daughter. Like, what is going on? I, I feel so old. 17. Unreal. Anyway guys, welcome back to the Moor Army Podcast for another week. Hope you're all keeping well out there. Uh, we're now here back on Tuesday. Welcome back to the Moor Army Podcast. I think this is episode 10 now of the Family Friendly Podcast. It would have been episode 11, but we did miss a week. Um, it is episode 11 of the Unleashed Podcast coming up this Thursday. Um, but yes, guys, welcome back for another week. What a week a week it's been, or weekend, should I say, it's been since I last spoke to you. It's been a it's been a, an emotional weekend. It's been a, a weekend where I've sat and thought to myself, where the hell is the last 17 years of my life going to? But it's been a fun weekend too as well. But on the plus side, it's now Tuesday, and tomorrow, our YouTube ban gets lifted. Whoop, whoop, we're back on YouTube tomorrow, so should be fun. Anyway guys, welcome back to the podcast for another week. Uh, worse of a start, before we go into anything else, or anything I want to talk about on the podcast today, let's get straight into the usual. If you're listening to the Mur Army podcast for the first time, which a lot of these out there are not, but if people who are jumping on board the Mur Army podcast, which a lot of these have been doing over the last few weeks, um... If you're new to the podcast and you'd like to get in touch with the show, um, the best way to do that, by sending your questions, uh, anything you'd like to talk about, and more, anything at all you want to talk about, any requests or anything like that there you want to talk about, uh, Podcast at yahoo.com is the email. If you want to contact me on social media, you can certainly contact us on our YouTube uh, Facebook page, which is Moor Army YouTube channel. Moor Mur Army, is it Moor Army YouTube channel? Is it Moor Army YouTube? I think it's YouTube channel. As far as I remember, I'm having one of those days today, guys. It's me old age kicking in. Um, also, if you want to contact me on Instagram, which a lot of you did do last night, as I was on a live stream with you for an hour last night, it was great talking to a lot of you on the stream last night. Uh, official Matthew Moore on Instagram, uh, you want to contact me on there. And the main hub is where you can get all your Moore Army merchandise, which by the way has now uh, for sale the Christmas merchandise, which you can get your Christmas hoodies, t shirts, uh, everything you can think of, and including. Other new merchandise that was released, Moor Army posters, and also the guy <laughs> created a Moor Army jigsaw puzzle. I know, hmm, for all you jigsaw people out there who like to do jigsaws, a Moor Army uh, jigsaw. We've also got uh, loads of our merchandise for kids, women, and men. MoorArmy.co.uk. You want to get it in now? Get it ordered now. You'll get it within about three, four days, maybe. At the most, if you're living in the UK and Ireland, if you're outside the UK, you're probably talking seven to ten working days, maybe at the most. Shipping is quite quick, so if you want to get your Moor Army merchandise and check out all our social media pictures and all the videos from the Moor Army YouTube channel and more, all you got to do is go to moorarmy.co.uk, get in there and uh, get your Christmas merch. So cause some of you have been sending me uh, screenshots of your orders, some of you have been ordering your Moor Army merchandise for Christmas, so... Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so thank you very much for all your orders. I do appreciate it. Um, we are going to be releasing more new merch, either before Christmas or after Christmas. We're going to be releasing more new merchandise uh, for 2023. So get yourselves on there. Now, the, the mobile version of the website is still a bit... Mm -mm. You can still get on there and access things like that. If you're on a laptop or a PC or whatever, computer console, whatever it is you're browsing on, the website looks absolutely fine. We're still trying to get the mobile version fixed. For some reason, there seems to be a bit of an issue, but I'll hopefully get that sorted in the next day or two. But you can still gain access to the site. That's moorarmy.co.uk. Anyway, guys, how you doing? I was on Instagram last night with you for a while, and it was great talking to so many of you last night. You were dropping in all your questions and stuff and throwing in suggestions and whatnot, and a lot of you were saying about 
<laughs> doing a meet and greet. And it was nice, obviously nice to hear it because I was planning on doing one before the, 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 the COVID-19 nuisance came along. And uh, obviously had to cancel that. But a lot of you in the stream last night were on it and saying that you'd love to see it. And a lot of you mailed me last night as well after the stream when you watched it back and said you'd love to see or love to have a meet and greet. And obviously I've been talking to Brooke and Lewis about it last night and I was thinking, well, we could start with a small venue maybe and maybe do a small meet and greet with maybe a, a, a small crowd of people or whatever else and maybe do a Q&A or something or do something, you know. We could do, like, hire a wee small tiny venue and do a meet and greet or something with people or whatever else and see what you think. So... Yeah, a lot of these were getting involved. Now, if you'd like to, if you'd like to see that, guys, then obviously keep getting in touch. You want to hear obviously a lot more is before I make a decision on that because I'd love that. I, I I love meeting the viewers of the channel. I love it so much, meeting new people and just talking to different people from different walks of life and just meeting people. And then people obviously tell me how our videos affected them, how they, what videos they love, and just all different things like that, you know what I mean? It's just it's just great to hear different stories from different people from different backgrounds. And, you know, as I said on the live stream last night, we were planning on doing a, a meet and greet before COVID, and then obviously everything changed. And there's still a lot of people out there who are a bit sceptical about going into open venues as well because of the whole friggin' nonsense about people being scared to stay at home still and not wanting to go out the door, which is complete and total nonsense. You know, you need to get back out there, guys, again, start living your life. So... Yes, I want to start making some inquiries this week about it, about getting the ball rolling, because at the end of the day, you know, I love meeting my audience and I love giving back to the audience, you know, whether it be stand talking to someone, giving them your time or, you know, taking a picture with someone or whatever it is, you know, because at the end of the day, guys, it's used obviously your support that keeps our channel going. But last night, the stream was good fun. It was good talking to you, a lot of you last night. There was a couple of wee trolls that popped in, obviously no, no surprise. Little morons coming in, then go and make another fake account. It's kind of funny. Like it just makes me laugh when I see people like that. We're all laughing at them last night. It was quite funny. Um, but no, it was good talking to a lot of these. I had a, a a a guy in from the states last night on the stream. Um, from Connecticut, I was talking away to him and talking to different people from the lo from local Northern Ireland as well. It was just I had a guy on who said him and his whole entire family and the dog watched the <laughs> watched the video. So it was uh. No, it was great the the what he called speak to a lot of you last night, and you know thanks for and people for who who have come back in later on and obviously watched the stream afterwards, um and obviously left emails and, and questions and messages on Instagram, uh, private mail and stuff afterwards. Uh, I really do appreciate it, guys. So it was good. You know, I'm gonna try and maybe get on once a week now and just drop in and sit for you with these for maybe an hour and answer some of your questions and just have a laugh and a joke and you know just talk about stuff and answer questions or whatever else. So. But no, it was good to hear from you last night. Really do appreciate everybody who came on the stream. If you haven't saw this, the video back, it's on for an hour. It's on my Instagram right now. You want to go back and watch it, um, where I talk about different things and answer questions, whatever else, and just sit there and Lou sticks his head in for a couple of seconds as well. And he even goes up, he even goes up the stairs and switches his phone on, goes on the Instagram and joins the live stream, even though he's in the same freaking house. Like, what's the point in that, Lewis? You could have just sat beside me. <laughs> that make no bloody sense. <laughs> He's a tit. But anyway, yes, uh, this past weekend was a bit of a busy one for us. Um, since I last spoke to you on Thursday. Now, since the Thursday's podcast as well, I've had a lot of people coming in having an opinion of what I had to say about, you know, my experiences with snobs and, and, and people who I sort of don't get on with and stuff like that there. And at the end of the day, guys, I could talk about that, but again, that's another podcast. You want to go back and check it out from last Thursday. I talked about Brooke at her speech thing last Thursday, and some people have come in and obviously disagree with what I had to say. At the end of the day, my channel is about, you know, back and forward, you know, banter. And at the end of the day, I have an opinion on things, and if you don't like my opinion on things, then you don't have to listen. There's a lot of people who come in with really good, valid points. Um, but at the end of the day, I was just sharing my experiences with people. And my views on people and a lot of, has been three or four who've come in with like really coming at me like it's the end of the world and they're, they're, they're really coming at me with like really like ah oh, who do you think you are type of comments and i'm like yeah okay whatever i'll just ignore you but people have come in with valid points and valid questions which at the end of the day i was just giving my opinion on it all my from my experience too as well so if you want to go and check out last thursday's podcast you certainly can but um yeah 
a lot of people have come in and said they've had you know, experiences like that as well, obviously dealing with people who are in the upper class world and who the, the rich think they're better than people and whatever else. So, guys, I just gave an opinion on it last Thursday and at the end of the day, I've always said that my only podcast is where I speak freely and if people don't like what I have to say, then switch off. But again, a lot of people did come in with a lot of valid points and I, I respect that. Um, debating, which I like. I, I love a good debate, so... Thanks for all your questions last week about that, guys. For the people who come in and obviously thought I was just completely targeting people in the, in the wrong way and took it the wrong way and have literally went out and started screaming all over the street with megaphones and going nuts and screaming, going, oh my God, he's so this, that. Well, well, then you just go ahead and do that because I'll not be paying attention to you. Um, but yes, it was, it was fun. But this past weekend, guys, since I last spoke to you, I mean, Friday night we were at football. Lewis and I um, met a few viewers at the match on Friday night. It was great to see us. Um, met a family. Uh, from Belfast, they came along just to say hello, and they were wonderful people. Um, their young lads been watching me for about three years now, and they came to the match on Friday night just to try and see Lewis and I. And the fact that they made their, their evening plans to come and try and meet us, which was great. Um, so really, really nice meeting them. And, um, so the mum and dad were great people too as well, and we're just chatting about the kids and the videos and. You know, all the stuff that's happened recently and all the stuff's happened over the years and things like that. And they were just a lovely, lovely, lovely family. Unfortunately, we got beaten Friday night again, which was a nightmare. And then results didn't go our way on Saturday. So now, officially, the welders were bottom of the table, which, to be quite honest with you, is a friggin' nightmare. And the team who we're down at the bottom with were actually playing this weekend. Because Lewis and I are away to lovely Castle Derg this Saturday. Castle Derg, what a beautiful part of the country. You know, it's a lovely drive down there. If it's a day like today when I'm recording this podcast, clear blue skies, a bit chilly but not too bad, we're laughing. If we go down there and it's pissing down with rain and it's cold and windy, we're in for a miserable day, trust me. Because when it rains down in Castle Derg or it snows or whatever else, it comes down like hellfire. Their pits floods all the time really badly. So I'm hoping that the weather for this weekend, it looks good so far, but I'm hoping the weather this weekend is like today. Chilly. Doesn't bother me, I'm used to the cold. It's a nice, nice clear sky. No rain. Please, please, please don't rain on Saturday. But yes, unfortunately, we are now at the bottom of the table, which is a flipping nightmare. Hopefully, we can pull it around. The January transfer windows open up next month. Uh, not next month, sorry. This is, we're still in November, aren't we? I think we are, yeah. Um, we're in the corner about four weeks away, so hopefully, we can make a few changes and obviously improve the squad and try and get ourselves out of the situation we're at the minute because at the end of the day, it's not a very nice place to be, believe me. I've experienced it before with other clubs and it's not a nice experience, trust me. But hopefully we can we can get the the, the right team into place and maybe add to it and we can try and steer ourselves out of that situation. So it's going to be an interesting few months leading into the new year. So it is. So hopefully we can get out of it. Fingers crossed. Um, we're not we're away this weekend, as I said. We're home the following week. So if you're about Belfast, guys, come up and say hello. You know, we'd love to see his up early football fans come up and see a brand new football stadium built £7 million state-of-the-art football stadium in Northern Ireland. You get a day out of the match. If you're there, come up and say hello. Don't see why not. So, but yes, then Friday pass was <laughs> was Brooke's birthday. Brooke turned 17 this past Friday. 17. Like seriously, 17. Where has the years gone? We started vlogging when Brooke was 10. I know, 10, and now nice 17. We're on YouTube seven years this March. I can't believe it's been seven years. Unreal. And we have grown an audience on YouTube who have saw Brooke and Lewis grow up over the years. You saw me getting a lot older, and recently a lot fatter too, because obviously I haven't really been out as much lately, due to our commitments and whatever else. I need to get myself back out walking again, to be honest with you guys. For a long time I was just sitting at home feeling sorry for myself. Um, I need to get myself back out there again, start walking and getting fit again because I've sat around for the last five or six months and obviously been out working and stuff and doing our bits and balls but at night time I'm sitting around and I'm just eating a load of crap and I'm feeling sorry for myself so I need to get back up because it has been a couple of tough few months as you all know um, but I need to get myself back out there again start losing some weight again but anyway yes, you saw Brooke and Lewis grow up over the vlogs over the last lot of years you saw her grow up into this young lady that she is now and it's just scary when I see her now I mean the fact that she's 17 now scares the absolute bejesus out of me 
and it was her birthday this past Friday. Now, on the, on the day of her birthday, she went out for a nice meal with her boyfriend. I know you're all th- a lot of these were asking the night, but what's your impression of Brooke having a boyfriend? I've known Brooke's boyfriend since he was a wee tote, like a wee small kid, and he's respectful and he treats her well and he looks after her. And also, his parents are like mine. If you mistreated her, his parents would kick his ass, <laughs> and vice versa with me and Brooke as well. So they're they're well matched, and uh, I've got to know him over the last couple of years, and he's a good kid. So and he's very respectful. Me and him crack jokes all the time, and wind up Brooke all the time, and have a joke and a laugh. So it's good, you know. It's it, it's refreshing because a lot of relationships at that age nowadays don't last, and they've been together nearly three years. So. You know, respect right there. It's hard to see a young couple now. It's like an old school couple back in, like, say, mum and dad's generation, where it's like, you know, the, the, the couples now just give up too quick and they run away. Back in the heyday, they stuck together, like, through their thick and thin. Like, for example, even during lockdowns when they weren't together, Paul still stuck by Brooke. And not very often you see a young lad like that nowadays doing that. So, fair play to them. You know, I mean, they're still together nearly three years and. He looks after her, so I can't really complain. And his family looks after her too as well. So at the start, I was sceptical about boyfriends and stuff, but obviously all dads are. And, but I knew Paul anyway from primary school, so I kind of knew he was a half-decent kid and he wasn't one of these wee rogues you see running around. Like some of them little effing morons on my Instagram stream the other night, you know, wee virgin boys that live in their mum's basement, you know, with nothing else better to do. Um, Paul's not like that. Paul's a good kid and he, he's now got himself a job and he's, he's a straight-A student in school. He's... He switched on, and you know, the two of them are good together. So, but anyway, they went out for their wee meal on Friday night and had a good time. Brooke showed me a couple of pictures and stuff. Back to his house to have a bit of time with his family, whatever else. And then on Saturday, uh, I went to the under 21s game on Saturday morning. And then on Saturday evening, well, Brooke went out bought 10 pin bowling with a couple of her friends on Saturday afternoon up at the SSE Arena. And then on Saturday night, we all got together, um, me and a couple of her friends, her boyfriend Paul, myself, Lewis, mum and dad. Uh, Tony couldn't make it unfortunately. Uh, but we all went out for dinner. You'll see this all in the vlog coming up by the way guys when the band's left on the channel tomorrow. Um, went out for dinner, had a bit of birthday celebrations, came back to the house, gave her birthday cake and the usual. Brooke's like me, she doesn't really like to do the whole big swanky parties and whatever else. Obviously next year we're going to try and do a bigger thing for her because she's 18 next year. Jesus Christ, 18. But anyway, um, no, we had a gooey night and one of her friends stayed over. Uh, long time friend of Brooks, right back from, I mean she's even appeared in the vlog once or twice um, over the years. Uh, she's been friends with Brooks since primary school, like way, way, way back in primary school. Uh, big shout out to her friend Grace, who's a good kid. My mum actually calls her my adopted daughter because she's always here all the time. She's always staying here and she's always here in some capacity. Uh, her and Brooke work together too now as well. And, you know, it's just, they've been so close to them for the last, I don't know, nearly 10 years now. And they're inseparable. So mum calls her my adopted daughter because <laughs> she's always here. But no, we had a good night on Saturday night. We celebrated Brooke's birthday. We had a good night. Um... You know, it's just weird the fact that I've got a 17-year-old daughter now, which is really starting to, to kick in now, thinking to myself, Jesus Christ, i got a 17-year-old daughter. Like, I remember the day she was born. And this is story time, by the way. Because <laughs> a lot of you said you like me telling stories on the on the podcast. Um, The day she was born, uh, it was so funny because she was actually born the same day George Best died. And I'll never forget it like it was yesterday. Um, I was obviously standing in the room Brooke's mum was obviously getting ready to, to try and push, as the saying goes, to get the baby out. And I was wearing my Liverpool polo shirt from the Champions League final that year. And uh, I'm standing there. And I remember looking out the window and seeing the snow fall really, really heavily. And it was ball freezing. It was 2005. And it was like 1 a.m. in the morning. We'd come into 2 a.m. in the morning. And the wee nurse, we midwife girl came in, tapped me on the shoulder and went, football man? I went, yeah, yeah, what's up? She goes, George Bess has just passed away. And I went, really? Holy smokes. I was going to say the other word, but I'm not going to say that because we're on the family friendly podcast. <laughs> um, I was like, really? And she was like, yeah, he's just passed away a few minutes ago. <clears throat> and I'm like, right, okay. And then an hour later, Brooke was born. Never forget it. Never forget the first, uh, she ended up being a C-section. 
So, sorry, one second. <coughs> it's not me getting choked up, by the way. I just got a bit of phlegm in the back of my throat. Um, yeah, no, I remember when she was born, and obviously she was lifted out of her mum's tummy, and the, I got to cut the umbilical cord, which is obviously a, a big thing for me. I, I requested to do that. And obviously she was lifted and cut, and the first person she was handed to was me. I got to carry her across the room with the wee nurse, and we got to clean her and clean all the blood off and stuff like that. Don't want to go into too many gory details for people out there with icky stomachs. Um, but yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. And then they said to me, carry her, you can carry her into the next room while we get mum all like, stitched up and whatever else. And I remember walking into that room that day. I was the only one in that room that um, at 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever it was, while her mum was away getting stitched up, whatever. And I remember standing there holding brick and looking down at her and going, oh my God, I've got a daughter. Like seriously, this this be thing I'm holding here in my hands right now is my baby girl. Like, my whole life just changed in an instant. Like literally changed within that moment. As soon as I heard her crying for the first time, it was just like wow. Like I remember it like it was yesterday. And the funny story was, the funny part of the story is, and I always crack a joke where I even brought it up to her the other night. <laughs> um. Brought the mum back in again, and mum was obviously all woozy and stuff with all the drugs and whatever else. And I took Brooke over to her. As soon as I put Brooke on her, on her, made to do the whole skin to skin contact with babies and whatever. As soon as I put Brooke on top of her mum, <laughs> she crapped all over her. <laughs> this big green poo went everywhere, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" And I was actually raking Brooke. The other day about it saying you obviously don't remember Brooke but like still this day you talk a lot of poo and you still do a lot of pooing still to this day <laughs> she was like you're not funny Dolly but um I always remember that and it was snowing and I remember dad came to pick me up after I got to spend an hour or two with obviously mum uh, the mum went to sleep and whatever and Brooke and obviously went into wee sleep as well so dad came to pick me up and I remember walking out the front of the Ulster Hospital in Donald and the whole car park was like pure white with snow. i never forget it. Pure white with snow. And I remember walking out of the car park, getting in Dad's car and coming straight back to our first wee home, we, our first bought home we ever lived in. Coming home, getting a cup of tea. We used to have this sofa with recliner chairs and all too as well. And I used to have one over near the TV so I could watch football and obviously lay back in my recliner chair. And I remember lying on the chair and watching Friends, the TV series Friends, and uh, just literally lying there and dozing off and waking it up about, this was around about what, 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning, and I was back up again for about 10 maybe, not even that. Quick shower, changed and straight back to the hospital again. That was 17 years ago. Guys, I remember that day like it was yesterday. And the fact now... That I look at Brooke now and she's as tall as me now. I always crack jokes by saying you may be bigger than your daddy, but your daddy will still knock your tripe in. <laughs> she just goes, it's all right, do you fight, Dad? So, just an ongoing wee joke we have. Um, But the fact that she's 17 now and the way she's turned out. I mean, I always have worries about how my kids would turn out. I've always tried to put in good morals. Like I was on the phone with a friend of mine last night talking to them and they're saying, you know, I've always tried to... Give the kids good morals, give them work ethics, you know, try and teach them right from wrong, how to be smart with money, how to, you know, respect your elders, pull your weight, you know, do your chores, work hard in school, keep your bedroom clean, stay out of trouble, stay away from big crowds, don't get involved in the wrong crowds, just the usual, typical, you know, decent morals you try and put into your child. And the way she's turned out now is just unbelievable. And a lot of you guys even mail me all the time, send to me, you know, Matthew, she's a credit to you, but I look at that and go, oh, really, right, okay, and then I sort of look at her and go, flip me, like, I couldn't ask for any more of a better daughter. I mean, she's never out with wrong crowds, she doesn't underage drink, she doesn't smoke cigarettes, she doesn't do drugs, she doesn't hang around street corners like some yahoos do nowadays. You know, she's either at work, tech, tech college, sorry, school, at home, or at work. That's the only place she ever goes to. Or she goes out with her boyfriend, Paul. 
like they go to the cinema or they go to Ten Pin Bowling or they go out with his sister and her partner. They go because apparently she's got this Instagram thing going on at the minute where she's one of these food reviewers in Northern Ireland where she goes around all these different places and Brooke and Paul goes with them. You know, so she's always out doing decent things. She's not out like standing around street corners drinking bottles of Buckfast and bottles of WKD and getting pissed and coming in through the door at 2 and 3 in the morning or I'm getting a phone call saying she's lying down some street corner completely pissed out of her skull. Like a lot of 17 year olds that they're doing or ones that just drop out of school and go, I ah, can't be ours. Then they wait till they're 18 and they go on their unemployment benefit and just sit there all their life and do nothing. Brooke's out there. Big Brooke's been crammed for a job since she was 13. I think I mentioned that before on the, on, on the YouTube channel or even on here, maybe the podcast, but Brooke's been crying for a job since she was 13. Maybe even 12, actually. You know, I always said to her, Brooke, when I was 13, 12 and 13, I had like a, this is going back a few years, a paper round where I used to go around delivering newspapers to people's homes. I also had a wee, wee bits and bobs jobs here and there as well, like I cutting grass and whatever else. And this is where I passed that on to like Lewis, like last summer, the summer before, Lewis wanted a new mobile phone. I said to him, okay, I'll pay for some of it, but you got to pay for the rest. And he went, what do you mean, Dad? And me, go out and earn it. So Lewis went out and set himself up a wee business locally where he was going around washing people's cars, cutting grass, you know, just doing things like that. And he was getting £10 here, £5 there, all this, all that. And he was putting it all in a box and he saved for a phone. And that's what I always teach my kids. Because there's a lot of, and I, I'm going to be honest here with you again, guys, and a lot of people out there are probably not, not agreeing with this, but there's a lot of people out there who don't teach their kids that morals and just say, Ah, just grow up and just sit on the, the dole all your life or whatever or have four or five kids or you know their kids are sitting at 12 and 13 just completely super glued to a, a playstation all day or an xbox or a mobile phone or whatever you know my two kids want to go out there and and like for example there's lewis 13 years of age and he's a he's an official irish league photographer like how many 13 year olds out there in the country can say that brooke is out there holding down a part-time job and whenever it's like during holiday breaks, whatever in school, she's out working nearly full time. She's got her colleagues to go to. She's still at school as well. A couple of days a week, she's doing all her, her A levels. She's holding this all down while holding down a job. So, I mean, people always say to me, you should be proud of them. And to be honest with you, I could not be any more proud of them too than what I am right now. I'm going to look at Brooke there turning 17 the other day. I was like, gee whiz, like 17 years of age. Like I remember when she was a baby. We done a vlog about two it was about two or three years ago. For a lot of people out there who followed my channel for a long time. I think the that video is still private at the minute. I'm able to I'll re-release it this week again whenever I get the videos uh, the the ban lifted on the channel. Brooke I showed Brooke a video of her sitting as a baby in our first bought home we ever had when she was only about maybe not even one. Maybe about one. And she was going around I'll tell you what, was her I think it was her first Christmas actually. Or was it her second birth? I can't remember. But it was an old DVD I found of her. And I showed it on the vlog. But it's her sitting watching it. And God love Lucy. She turned and goes, where was I? Me <laughs> Lucy weren't even a thought back then. So it was just, I, I remember her being like that. And then I look at her now and it's like, oh my God. Seriously, 17 years of age. Scares the absolute crap out of me now. The fact that she's, in a year's time, she's going to be an adult. Scurry times, guys. Trust me. Scurry, scurry times. So, um, I can't be any more proud of her. I'm so, so, so proud of her. And again, you know, I offered her a, a, a bigger and better birthday, but she obviously wanted to do what she wanted to do for her birthday. So, I just let her do what she wanted to do. And she had a quiet birthday with her friends and she had a good time. And my adopted daughter, Grace, stayed over too as well. And, uh, you know, she got up. The next day, and her and Grace got up the next morning, got dressed and showered, and went to work. So, in closing, Brooke, if you're, I, I tried to get her on the podcast today, guys, but she's so so busy. Um, I was going to leave recording this podcast later on today, but she's really really busy. So, I may even try and do a, a message on social media or even on the on a vlog where she can thank all you guys for your birthday messages because a lot of you did send her birthday messages. And my God, a lot of you sent some really good birthday messages with memories and all in it. And also, you know, saying you've been watching her since she was a wee tote, like 10 year old than I. You know, I couldn't ask for any more support, guys. You mean, no, and a lot, I want to, like, obviously, I've recorded a, a vlog for her birthday. 
But I'm going to try and get her to sit down and do a wee thing, say, right, no, thank you guys personally for that, because at the end of the day, you know, you don't understand. Like, I've I had a lot of trolls coming in saying, I people really don't contact you. Yes, they do. And I still, to this day, can't get over the fact that people do take a five minutes out of their day to write an email or, you know, oh, Matthew, I love the video when you've done this, or could you give a birthday message to such and such, or, you know, that, that, that that's just amazing. And I'm gonna I'm gonna sit down with her and I'm gonna ask her to do, do that wee message. I tried to get her on the podcast today, guys, but she is extremely busy. And with it being the family friendly ones, but it would have suited her better as well because obviously the unleashed one is where I speak more freely. <laughs> um, but no, honestly, seventeen. Where the hell is the time going? Seriously, it, it makes me feel so 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 old. But honestly, I couldn't thank all you guys out there for sending the messages to her because it really does mean a lot to all of us. Right, I want to get into some of your questions now because a lot of you have been sending me questions, especially over the last sort of two or three days, and then obviously last night on Instagram as well. Um, sending me messages and stuff, asking me to read out some of your questions. One of a lot of you people keep asking me about this World Cup thing. I can't predict the World Cup; it's just so predictable, unpredictable because everybody's beating everybody. But then now a lot of the bigger teams are starting to sort of kick in the gear now. So, big game tonight, England against Wales, which I'll be looking forward to watching that tonight. Um. And all I can say to you is, guys, <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast before the, the, the channel, our YouTube channel reopens again, um, stay tuned. I've got a special vlog coming up, uh, should I say, related to the World Cup. Stay tuned. It's going to be good, trust me. And also, um, if you're listening to it afterwards, then you can go back and watch it on the channel. But there you go. <laughs> anyway, guys, I want to go with a couple of emails here, first of all. Um, one particular one stood out for me. Uh, I was asked this question the other day. And I think I mentioned it on the, la the live stream last night as well. I think I did, and I, do I, I was obviously speaking about a lot of different things last night, but I got a great email last Thursday for the podcast uh, from a girl called Jane Crozier. Now, Jane, I know you're probably listening again, and you're probably thinking, oh my God, he's written my name out again. He's embarrassing me. No, sorry, but I got your email back. I asked you to email, email me back, and you did. So fair play to you. Um, she asked me the other day about being the Prime Minister what five things I would do, um, you know, being obviously Prime Minister and stuff like that, or what I do, and I suggested a few things, um, the likes, for example, uh, the poor bumbling Boris, Mr. <laughs> Did a haircut. Uh, and that, that other little weasel who was on I'm a Celebrity, get me in here, Matt Hancock, who's begging for forgiveness, and he needs to be shown the door too. Um, a lot of our politicians who had shown the door as well. But anyway, go back and listen to the podcast on Thursday anyway. Um, this is obviously what she has wrote back to me. Um, now, if you're offended by people, what I have to say here, it's your choice, but this is what she wrote to me anyway. Hi, Matthew. Thank you for answering our question on Thursday's podcast. My pleasure. I don't know if I'd be a good Prime Minister as woman. have had have had, had a good track record in that role as of recently. Hello, well. Apart from Thatcher. Okay. Uh, but if I was PM, I would do the following. Number one. Deport any it was migrants leeching off hard-working citizens and kick any scroungers off benefits and make them get jobs. Okay. Number two, solve the NHS crisis and bring it back to its glory days. That's actually one thing I would totally agree with you. The NHS is completely broke at the minute. Now, this is one here made me laugh. Ban the BBC and other reporters from being broadcasted on national TV. Ban the BBC. Uh, I talked about TV licenses and BBC recently about that there on the podcast, so go back and check that out. Um, BBC have a lot of questions to answer, especially about the whole pandemic nonsense too. Uh, number four, lower, lower the working age to 13 or 14, as many kids want to make extra pocket money and can bring in more income to help poorer families. We'll make the next generation more hardworking from a younger age and show more respect. Well, that is true. Because I was working from the age of 12. Um, <laughs> deport Jeremy Corbyn, Keir Starmer, and all other lefty snowflakes for their crimes against British people. <laughs> I love this woman. This is great. <laughs> I think you might agree with some of these. LOL. Hope you and the family are doing well, Jane. Brilliant. Love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh dear, Jen, I think me and you will actually have some really good conversations, so we could, if you're on Instagram, drop me a mail, <laughs> or on the Facebook fan page, and we'll have a, a bit of a debate back and forward about who we should sort out if we were Prime Minister. Um, thank you for your, your email once again, thanks for tuning in, everybody, I appreciate it. Um, 
No, honestly, that's a that's a really good one. So it is. But if you didn't, didn't agree with anything that Jane had to say here, then obviously that's your opinion about it all. And you can contact me and I can read a response back here on the podcast. Obviously, try and keep it clean if it's the family-friendly one or if it's the unleashed version. A lot of, now, here's, before going to the next message, a lot of you were saying on the live stream last night you prefer the Unleashed podcast than the standard podcast because the Unleashed podcast, I can say more and I can swear as well. Um, still get the obviously occasional one coming in saying they don't like the Unleashed podcast because I occasionally drop the F bomb or the B word or whatever out there and you don't like it. So they prefer the other, this podcast like I'm talking on now. So that, that's obviously a personal choice and it's up to yourself, you know, what you want to listen to. Some people say they don't like the podcast at all, full stop. That's your personal opinion. You can go and pick out all those millions of other podcasts around the world you can go and pick them and listen to them talk nonsense um but yeah that girl jade i, I like her jane if you're listening to me if you're on instagram or facebook drop a, a message privately to the fan page and we'll have a debate about politicians and stuff i'd be a, i'd be an interesting debate i'm sure me and you could have a good laugh over that <laughs> anyway moving on to the next one here i've got one here from kevin uh kevin has said hi matthew love the podcast so much fun listening to you especially on the Thursday episode where you can be more like yourself. I know it's probably frustrating for yourself being on YouTube now with all the language barriers where you can't really say this and say that without being having the threat of being cancelled. I'm sure it's so frustrating considering your early uh, can read your earlier YouTube videos, you were swearing in them. Not all the time, but occasional wee F-bomb now and again every so often, but now you can't do it because of the restrictions in the cancel culture. What's your thoughts on this? I totally agree. 100%. My early videos, I occasionally say the word F or whatever, SOB or things like that. And then obviously YouTube come in and it's like, oh, you can't say this and you can't say that and you have, you have to be politically correct as the saying goes. And that really does my head in. I had a conversation last night with a friend of mine, a long conversation actually last night about the whole situation in the world now where you can't say this and you can't say that and there's too many snowflakes out there and then if you have an opinion, Someone had something. Someone says something, and you come back at them with an opinion that actually is a really good, obviously, debate or whatever. They take it to offence, and then they go on to social media and cry and boohoo to their mommy and cry and their mommy and daddy and go, oh, "They hurt my feelings." Oh. That that this type of world's not the type of world I like to live in right now, and it it's just pfft, crazy. It's crazy. It really is crazy. Um. So that's why again now, if, like my dad's a flipping nightmare for for swearing. He's worse than me. And not my earlier vlogs from years ago, but my dad's <laughs> this is crazy. But then sure it was a couple of Christmases ago. He, he cracked the joke at the trolls. So I turned the camera off, he laughed and went, I he says the wee trolls and not like that. He he swore and I had I'd obviously beep it out where it went beep 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 and then he looked at the camera and went, Oh sorry, flipping this and flipping that and, and then he winked and turned his head away. You know, it, it's crazy the way the fact now, but then there's still YouTubers out there that use the bad language. And don't, but at the end of the day, I have a lot of young viewers out there, you know, and there's a time and a place where, like, for example, the night where I told where our house was hit again, attacked again, and I sat down with the camera and said to them, basically, enough's enough, and I did swear in the video, but obviously I beeped the words out. There's a time and a place where you need to use language like that, and again, sometimes you don't, and sometimes you do, so, again, it is frustrating. To answer your question again, it, it is frustrating. I don't really mind it, the fact that I have to do a bit of extra edit and all that doesn't bother me. But it is frustrating. It really is frustrating sometimes when people say, like, Oh, you, you dropped an F bomb in your vlog back in 2017. Well, then that's just your sad because you're just digging through vlogs to try and find something wrong to try and come at me to be a troll. Or you get people saying, like, oh, I didn't like what you said about that. Or, well, then just don't watch. But again, it is frustrating. You know the way it is now, but again, now because I have a younger audience, I try to, you know, please everybody. But I shouldn't. I, I can just put my own content out and be myself. Like when I put the on these podcasts out, I just say here, sit here and say this, 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 and as I said, did I say that in the stream last night? I think I did. I said last night whenever I've had a week of really bad trolling or whatever, I just sit. I stick a wee fishing rod sitting at the end of, of a lake with a fishing rod, and you throw the, the hook into the water, and you reel them in like fish. You just you just drop a wee wee seed there for them, and they go, oh, let's get all this. And you just reel them in, and I just I have fun with the trolls, and I just laugh at them. So I do. But to answer your question again, yes, it's, it is frustrating. It can be, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's just one of those things. YouTube sometimes wouldn't say a word about it. 
and other times they do. Like for example, they took down one of my podcasts on the YouTube channel, on the podcast YouTube channel. I appealed against it, got it back on again. They took another one off, and then they didn't give it back again, but it's still available on Apple Music and Spotify. Well, you're listening to us on right now. So if you listen to us on the YouTube channel, by the way, guys, don't forget to subscribe below. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, but though, it, it, the world's so PC now, it's unreal. Like the day, uh, go back to the conversation I had with my friend last night, I was, I was talking away and we were saying, you know, about, you know, in our day you could say this and say that, now you, you can't, not even just racism or nothing like that, we're talking about, we're just talking about general conversation. You know, it's like you say a certain thing, oh, we can't say that now because that offends the certain community or offends this one. And it's like, really? I don't change for anybody. So why should I change for someone who sits and cries like a snowflake? So thanks for your question. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's just that uh, the world's gone bonkers lately, so it has. So what can you do about it? Like, Here's one here from Matthew, fellow namesake. How you doing? Matthew, love the podcast, love the videos, been a fan now for three years. I am from Chicago, Illinois. Oh, hello, Chicago. God, I haven't been there since 2006. Always wanted to know, would you ever come back to Chicago? Because I have seen before, you have mentioned on your YouTube channel and also mentioned on your podcast, you've been to Chicago. When are you considering coming back to the Windy City? As we'd love to meet you in person someday. Thanks very much for all the content. Matthew. Well, Matthew. Matthew to Matthew. Here's a question. I was there in 2006 for WrestleMania 22. The All-State Arena. One arena I've always wanted to win to. I was talking to a guy actually last night from Connecticut. Who, we're talking about obviously, I was stable off the arena and stuff where he lives and all. And he was like, how the hell do you know that? I was like, because I've been watching it for so long and know all the arenas off by the top of my head. But anyway, talking about wrestling. Anyway, uh, Chicago. Didn't really get to see much of Chicago while I was there. Because I was only there for like two days. I spent most of the time at the hotel, the fan access thing. Well, it wasn't as big as what it is now. Then I was in the arena and then I flew home the next day. Well, we were actually over my own. So I did, but I met a couple of people from Belfast over there while I was over there at the time. So, but uh, I would love to go back to Chicago and go right into the middle of the city itself and see the whole place and you know really enjoy the experience of Chicago because it's a, it's a great, it looks like a, a, well, when I was there, the parts I did see of it was, was a brilliant place to be and it was just amazing. So, uh, when I'm going back to Chicago again, I do not know. No idea. But the fact that I've got listeners and viewers in Chicago is great. And I love it. So, thank you very much for that. Um, from what I can see here, you said you've been a viewer for a while now. So, um, I do have some footage from Chicago on an old DVD. Uh, or was that Detroit? I think it was Chicago. I can't remember. But some from Detroit as well, from back in 06, on a DVD and an old video as well, which I might actually hook out and try and show some stuff um, when I was there. And I've got some stuff from... I actually came across, guys, my home video from 2004 in New York City when I was there for WrestleMania 20. So there you go. I may put that on the vlog sometime as well. I did show part of it when I met Mick Foley in New Jersey and on over on the Staten Island Ferry to New Jersey to meet Mick Foley, the wrestler, and he'd done a personal message for Tony because Tony was in the hospital at the time getting an operation on his legs and Mick Foley had done an operation for him. That video is on the YouTube channel. Um, that was filmed back in 2004. That is nearly 20 years ago. That is flipping insane. That was a year before I got married and had Brooke. That was March 20, 2004, and I got married in February 2005. And Brooke was born in November 2005. Honeymoon baby. There's an Norway story for you. Um, but yeah, Chicago, great place. Um, one of my favourite wrestlers was from Chicago, CM Punk. So uh, yeah, I'd love to get back there sometime soon and actually see the full city of Chicago. We'll get right smack bang in the middle. Um, Lewis and I were supposed to go to Philadelphia this year for Wrestlemania but we're not going there we're going to leave it or sorry LA this year for Wrestlemania but we're going to leave it the next year and go to Philadelphia I want I want to go to Philly I want to try a proper Philadelphia cheesesteak I want to go to Philadelphia and go and see the Rocky statue I want to go to Philadelphia and just enjoy the city so I'm looking forward to getting there next year Lewis and I are going to be flying out there next year so we are so we need to start saving our pennies um, soon so we're here for Wrestlemania 40. Like, that's flipping insane, Wrestlemania 40. I can't believe it. But thanks for your question. All the love to Chicago out there. Hope you're all doing well out there. Spread the word around Chicago about the podcast and the YouTube channel. 
And if we ever get to Chicago soon and you're still watching or whatever, drop me a message and we'll meet up and we'll have a coffee or a beer or a bite to eat or something. Because I love to meet new people from different countries as well. So all good and out. Keep it coming. Keep uh, the support coming, guys, because we really do appreciate it. And we we'll love you all. So. Okay, let's get to our email here. One here from Jamie. Short and sweet. Hey, Matt, how's it going? <laughs> when are you going back to Liverpool again for another trip? Thanks. <laughs> Okay, straight to the point. Um, due back in Liverpool at this present time as this podcast has been recorded. I'm due back in Liverpool in February. Now, I could possibly be going in January um, for the Liverpool Wolves game, which was drawn yesterday for the FA Cup game. Uh, Lewis and I could be going to that one. But at the moment, I'm currently booked in for Liverpool versus Real Madrid in February. That's the next one I'm booked in for. Um this whole break at the minute with the World Cup being in the winter is an absolute pain in the ass. If the Premier League was still going ahead at the minute, I would have been over a couple more times right now as we speak. But with this whole World Cup being on at the minute too as well. Um, I was actually asked last night on the stream as well, I'm going to a World Cup game. I wish. You've seen the price of fucking flights. You've seen the price of hotels and the, the, the cheapest ticket for a World Cup game is like 200 quid. You have the Jimmy Giraffe. And that means laugh, by the way. Um... But yeah, no, I'm, I'm due back at the minute in February. Now, I, I wanted to go back over next month, even for a day or two, for the Christmas market. Because they've extended the Christmas market in Liverpool this year. And I really want to go back and see it. Because I love being in that city so much. I, I just miss not being there. Someone asked, actually asked me last night as well, uh, would I ever live, live in Liverpool? I was so close to moving there back about three or four years ago. So it was. So um, the answer to your question, so yes, February. At, at the moment, it's February. Possibly January too as well. No, no, me. I'll get tickets for the January game. So, um, yeah, hopefully January. But I want to get over before Christmas, guys. I want to see the city lit up in the Christmas, all the Christmas decorations. And I said to the kids, you know, let's just go for a Christmas break. Oh, Tony, you know, and I was like, okay, no problem. Well, I'll, I'll go on my own. <laughs> I just love the city. So, do guys, as y'all probably know, I've been over there that many times. I've lost bloody count. But anyway, yes, that's that's the end of the emails. Let's get into the Instagram messages now. Let's have a look here and see now. Flip me. See these message requests, guys? I'm, I'm really sorry if it takes me a couple of days to get back to you. It just takes me so, so long to get back to them. Anyway, here's one here from Miranda. Miranda wants to know, Hi, Matthew. Well, that's what she writes first of all. Sorry, she wants to know as well. Hi, Matthew. Uh, love your podcast, etc., etc. Can I ask you as well, are you coming to the Christmas market in Belfast this year? I am currently working at a store nearby and I'd love to meet you and the kids. You seem a lovely family and if you're at the Christmas market, please let me know. Christmas market in Belfast. Why wouldn't I want to go? I go every year. It's, it's a great... I haven't been up yet. Obviously, it's open now. I haven't been up yet. But yes, I will be going. And I'll announce it on the vlog, so stay tuned for that Christmas market in Belfast. Uh, it can be a bit more pricier, but when you go up there, it sort of gets you into that Christmas spirit. This year, guys, I haven't really sort of got in the Christmas spirit yet. I mean, a lot of people have put their Christmas trees up. I always put mine up on the 1st of December. But at the minute, I haven't got mine up because 1st of December is Mum's birthday, which is Thursday. Is it Thursday? Aye. And I just haven't really thought about Christmas this year. And the kids are older now, and the whole magic starts to disappear when the kids get older. But once you get the Christmas tree up and you start going to the Christmas markets and you start doing all these wee different things, then you start feeling the Christmas spirit. But when your kiddies get older, the magic seems to disappear. So it does, but yes, stay tuned to the vlogs and obviously social media and stuff and we'll let you know when we're going to the Christmas market because, yeah, if you work nearby the store, certainly we'd love to meet you. Again, guys, I keep telling you, even we're talking about this earlier on about meet and greet and stuff, I love meeting new people. I just love it. I just love meeting new people. Um, But thanks for your question. Appreciate it. Let's go on to another one here now. See, oh, message requests, message requests, message requests. Here we go. Hey, Matthew, can I ask you a quick question about your Liverpool trips? I'm going to Anfield in March for the very first time. Do you recommend any places to go and eat some food? Also, sorry, good food. Do you recommend anywhere decent to stay? We have a few places pre-booked, but do you recommend any to go and stay? I'm going with my brother, my sister, and also my dad. Thanks for all the videos. I do appreciate it. Well, there you go. Right, well, <laughs> for <laughs> recommend food ways. Well, Bold Street. We can write that down. Bold Street is a good place for food. Um, there's a couple of nice wee spots down at the docks as well. Um, but Bold Street has some really different, unique... It depends on the type of food you're looking. 
Because see, on the likes of Bold Street, you've got all your places. Like me and Lewis went in that place, Red Dog Saloon, recently. And oh my God, the food was amazing. But then beside that, they have all these different types of restaurants. And then on Bold Street itself, you have a selection of all different types of you know, food, like Cantonese, Chinese, you know, Japanese food, you know, Indian food, you know, even Filipino food. All these, this whole street has a line, like your traditional British fish and chip shops, all your different standard restaurants, like that Red Sox Dog Saloon's, like an American sort of sporty type place where you can go in and get your food in there. But behind that there, there's like a big square where there's all these different Norway restaurants as well. You've obviously got your Witherspoons around there too as well. Um, there's quite a lot of places in Liverpool to go. To eat. Now, the places to stay. Now, if you're all looking at individual rooms, there is a few wee spots you could go to. I'll tell you what you can do. If, obviously, you've sent me a message on Instagram, um, I'll reply to you today when I get off the, off the podcast here. I'll drop you a couple of wee links in the few wee spots that I would use. Um, obviously, I want to go over for football or whatever else, but... There's a couple of wee places, like for example, there's one nice down in there with Lewis recently, and it's really, really good. It's called the Stay City Apartments, which is down near the back of James Street train station. Beautiful wee spot. Mum and Dad love it as well. They stay in there all the time. It's like wee apartments and whatever else. I'll drop you a wee link in that there. It's called the Stay City Apartments. Um, but I'll, if you're if you're going there for football related then, you know, whether you want to stay in the city or you want to stay up near Anfield, there's a couple of wee spots up near around that area too as well. But I've got a, I've a, I always keep a list of maybe 10 or 20 places that I would sort of recommend to use. But again, if you give me obviously a full list of people who are going and build a workout, obviously what place would suit you best, and then I'll forward it on to you. So drop me an army mail on Instagram today, and I'll obviously communicate with you, and I'll try and uh, help you out. So I like to help our people out here going to Liverpool for the first time. So, but yeah, um, you're going to you're going to watch a game. So enjoy. Might see you there. Never do. Let me know you're going to be there with me at the same time, and we'll hook up, and we'll we'll have a chat, and we'll talk about football and whatever else. So, but yeah, recommendations for food. It just depends, obviously, in your message as well. Explain to me what type of food you all sort of like to go for, and then I can sort of give you a couple of recommendations for different places across the city of where you can go and obviously get different types of food. So, with me and Lewis, we're pretty plain eaters, as you probably know, over all our videos and stuff. So, if you see anywhere, or say for example, you prefer say Indian food or I don't know, whatever type of food it is you're into, I can sort of then sort of go over, well, here's a list of places here from this street, this street, and this street. Their recommendations are high. Go to here, go to there. If you like a good steak, there's a lot of steak houses across the city too as well. So, obviously, let me know. Drop me an army message, and I'll try my best to help you. So, how's that sound? Can't say any further than that, Connor. So, and if it's your first time in the city, enjoy, because Liverpool is freaking awesome. I don't want to get back for the Christmas market. With the kids. So I want to spend some Christmas time with them. So there you go. <laughs> right, let's get one more Instagram message here before we move on and, and end the podcast for today. Gee whiz. Guys, see since that live stream last there's so many bloody messages on Instagram. <laughs> awesome. Here we go. One more. Hey Matthew, how you doing? My name is Chris and I am from Balamina. Hello Chris, how are you? Just wanted to know, you work in the Irish League for Harlem with Welders. That is true. Also you said you've worked for Banger. Would you ever work for any of the top Premier League clubs across the country or maybe even work for the Northern Ireland national team one day? Just curious, as you have had a lot of experience across the Irish League uh, over the last year, so many years you've worked there. Thanks for the great content. Keep up the good work. Next time you're in Balamina, give us a shout. Okay, no problem. Um, cut a long story short. Now obviously it's a football related question, so I'm just going to have to answer this. Um... In fact, I may even go and answer one more because obviously people are probably fed up with me talking about football. Uh, yes, I'm in the Irish League nearly 13 years. Have I been asked to go and work for bigger clubs? Yes, I have on many occasions. Um, have I been asked to work for the national team? No, but I have been around the national team when, they're, when they were preparing for the Euros. Um, I even have like content on my YouTube channel because of it, showing me with the, within that time they were training. Um, and they were preparing to leave for the Euros um, when I was still a banger at the time. I also have an official, very expensive, real uh, match ball from the Euros on top of my cupboard, my living room, my bookcase, all signed by the full Northern Ireland squad. Because um, obviously they were all there and I was there at the time doing a bit of media stuff, whatever at the time. So, uh, would I love to work for the national team? You better believe it. Would I accept the work for the national team? You better believe it. Travel around, the, around Europe and around the world with the Northern Ireland team? Who wouldn't want to do that? Now, 
I have been asked to do work before for the IFA. Now, a guy who no longer works for the IFA years and years ago offered me a couple of wee bits and bobs to do, which obviously wasn't really worth leaving the house for, to be honest. And I was to do all the work, and they were basically to take all the credit, that type of sort of situation, and I refused it. Um, I have been asked to go and work for other bigger clubs, but I am the type of person that likes to stay loyal to one club. I do a lot of guys go around filming all different games at different clubs and, you know, move on after a year or two, whatever it is. And, you know, I mean, I, bang, I, I've said this before, you know, I'm always grateful, even though I ended it in bad, not bad terms, but sort of not good terms when I left Banger in 2000 set, or 2017. I'm always grateful to Banger because they would want to give me the opportunity to perform on a platform where I could go out and... I mean, them videos are no longer on YouTube anymore, guys, of me standing in front of the camera for presenting and talking to people and reading out the news. I was doing, like, a proper TV presenter every single week. In fact, when I was doing my early days of vlogs, people were coming in saying, oh, I found you on Banger TV, now you're on YouTube as well, uh, doing other things like YouTube vlogs and stuff. So um, I still have all those videos of me presenting and standing going, hi, welcome to Banger TV, blah, 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 blah. Coming up on today's program, we've got highlights, news, interviews, a whole proper busy TV program. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm always grateful to Banger for giving me that platform. I did do it for a while at the Welders. And then I stopped doing that type of stuff because we we're moving into the new stadium and when we're getting through all the different things and I'd rather wait till the new stadium opened up and then the new stadium did open up. But there's a whole big thing going on. So next season, I have said to the club next season, I'm going to be doing presenting again where I'm going to be standing in front of the camera every week doing presenting, talking about the news, talking about different things, interviews, what's going on with the club behind the scenes. We'll be doing more videos like I used to do at Banger, like inside match day, inside uh, training, behind the scenes, doing different things with the team like crossbar challenges, silly wee challenges, you know, things like you see on all different, the bigger TV channels across the water and stuff. I was doing a lot of Banger for years, so... Um, but again, going back to what I was saying there, I was offered to go and work for bigger clubs and I turned it down to stay loyal to Banger at the time. Sometimes I do look back and kick myself, but I have a lot of great memories of Banger. And then when I went to the, the Welders in 2017, a couple of our clubs have come in and said, would you ever come work for us? No, I'll stick with the Welders for a while. And obviously the Welders and I moved into their new stadium and obviously they were not doing so good this season, obviously because of the results and whatever else. But, you know, I'm confident that we'll get out of that situation, hopefully. And next season, I'll be standing in front of a camera again, presenting, talking, doing all the, the usual jazz that I used to do years ago. So sometimes I do miss doing that, to be honest. But but to answer your question, yes, I have been asked to do that. But I'll work for the national team, hell yeah. I would love to work for the national team. And in fact, the Irish Cup fifth round draw is coming up here soon as well. And I'm hoping to get along to that there to do a couple of interviews and maybe grab some interviews for the podcast. Because mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of big name managers there, ex ex players. I was there last time, 2019 draw before COVID hit, and that was a funny experience. Day it's actually on my on my uh, YouTube channel, the vlog from that day. That was a good one that day. So it was. I ended up getting work out of that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll be going hopefully get to the Irish Cup draw in the next few weeks as well. So stay tuned for that coming up on the channel as well. So there'll be another vlog coming from that day too from the National Stadium. In Belfast or Windsor Park, as I still like to call it. But thanks for your football question. I do appreciate it. Um, but I ever work for the national team? You better travel around the world with Northern Ireland. Who, who would not want to take that job? They're not wise in the head. So there you go. <laughs> okay, one one more question before I go. One more question before I go. Let's have a Jeffy Duke here. He's trying to look through your phone. See, what I should have done was I should have been on my laptop with Instagram open and open up a couple of tabs and had a couple of questions sitting out instead of having the whole thing on my phone here. A flipping nightmare. I do appreciate all these messages, but I just, I just seem to be trying to pick out whatever one I can here. Right, here's one here. I've got one here from a Stephen. Stephen wants to know, Hi Matthew, can I ask you right at this present time right now, do you have a car? If so, what type of car do you drive and what is your favourite car of all time? At the moment, no, I don't have a car. I used to have a car. Don't have a car at the minute. No, I don't. My favourite car in the world is a black Ford pickup truck, as the Americans like to call it. Um, the reason why I like them is because I think they're just a really cool car. I just love them. 
Um, people might think, oh, but they're not practical and you can't really, you can get family, you can get a four door family size one of them and they're handy for whenever you want to move stuff about and you obviously get the big bit at the back where you can get the, the, the trucks as well where you have the pullover part where you can pull the big shutter across where you obviously you can put your stuff into it, say you're doing shopping or whatever else. Um, but I just love those trucks. I've always wanted a truck. If I ever became a millionaire, I'd buy one. If I ever became a wealthy man, I'd buy one. They're only about 20 grand, maybe at the most. Sometimes you can get them cheaper. Um, but I've always wanted one. And if I ever got one, I think I would actually stand and cry the day I got one. You know, people say like, oh, but my favourite car is a Ferrari or a whatever it is. I just want one of those cars. If I had one of those cars sitting in my driveway, I would be done. I would be complete. I've got my kids, my home and that car. That's a car that I would love to own. If I won, say, a million pounds tomorrow, I would spend 20 grand on one of those cars. And I'd be and obviously move into a nicer house, of course. I wouldn't go big mansion or nothing like that. So I always get people asking me all the time, well, do you ever move into a YouTuber's mansion? No, I don't do that. Um, I'm a very plain guy, and I've always wanted one of those cars. And if I ever got one, I would be in my element. I've had photographs. I think there's actually a photograph on my Instagram, I think, for what I remember. In Liverpool, about two or three years ago, and I'm standing beside one, and I looked at it and went, "Oh my god!" So I went online and had a look, and one of the local dealers outside Merseyside sold them for nineteen grand, and this was a big ass, a big son of a bitch. I almost, almost were, as in son of a bitch. It was a big, big car, and I was like, "I love one of these cars. Just drive around in comfort." And there's so my uncle drove a big Jeep. For a while, my dad drives a wee small, tiny RAV4 Jeep, but this is a like a big, like country style pickup truck type car. I've always wanted one of those, and maybe one day, if I'm lucky, I might get one. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Right. Well, thanks for your question. I appreciate it. Um, gonna go on here now, guys, and wrap up the podcast for today. So, thank you very much for listening, as always. Um, this Thursday's podcast is going to have a lot of good, interesting subjects on it. Um. Also, we're going to be voting for the Jackass of the Week this week, which I'm going to put up today. Hopefully, I'll be pulling my Instagram. Um, a lot of you have been sending me messages about that bloody balloon head, Matt Hancock, on that Emma Celebrity coming third. Oh, see, a lot of people will be giving me suggestions for, uh, what do you call it, Jackass of the Week. But anything can happen now between now and Thursday. So, I want to go through uh, bits and bobs on the internet to see if I can find top stories. Before I do go, guys, actually, sorry, I wanted to bring this up on the podcast today. Um, I don't know if I, I just remembered about it there until now, um, and it really, it really hit me for six because I was talking. He actually replied to one of my messages on Facebook two days before. Anybody out there remember the TV show Power Rangers from back in the day? The guy who used to play Green Ranger and White Ranger. Um, you probably all know who he is. Uh, this is actually really, really like weird to talk about because the fact that like you know <laughs> I replied to one of his, his posts on Facebook his name is Jason David Frank by the way um I replied to one of his messages on Facebook and he replied to me and he gave me a like like two days and then two days later guys he took his own life and it's really strange because he was on a live stream moments before he passed away and it's so crazy because everybody remembers him from being in the Power Rangers movies and TV shows and whatever else. And then there's a couple of weeks ago, Tony Tony was around one night and we're having a beer and we're joking and laughing. And he was watching Power Rangers on my TV for a laugh and I'm going, what the hell are you watching Power Rangers for? And this guy, Jason David Frank, obviously, you know, has been around for a long time. Everybody knows who he is. He's He goes around at all Comic Cons and meets, he, he always has time for his fans. He was always meeting his fans and you know, doing all these different things not for, for charities and whatever else. And last week, literally as he got off a live stream, guys, moments later, he went and took his own life. And it was really, really, really shocking. Because the fact that two days beforehand, he put a post up on Facebook and I commented on it. And I wouldn't normally comment on his page, but I comment and he, he liked it and he replied to me. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, it's not really him doing it. It is him doing it, guys, because he's done live streams in the past where he's actually sitting there on his computer replying to people live on chats and Facebook posts and whatever else. And his, his funeral service, I think it was yesterday, they were streaming it live on, on the, the, his Facebook page. And the fact that, like, 
it's one of them ones that came out of nowhere. Nobody expected it. Nobody knew that he was struggling. And all of a sudden, he's gone. And it was strange because... And the reason why I'm talking about this here is because, you know, I've been through a lot of personal stuff myself back in 2013 whenever my marriage and all ended as well. And I was going through a lot of, like, serious issues as well. And and then I know, I know people who recently have, like, took their own life and... Guys, life's too fucking short. All I can say to you is, anybody out there who, who is suffering or whatever, you know, you need to come out and speak and talk to someone and, you know, whether it be a friend or a family member or a doctor or a specialist or whatever. It's just that one the other day sort of shocked me, the fact that, like, two days beforehand, he replied to one of my messages on Facebook and then, like, literally moments after he came off a live stream with his, his fans live on Facebook and he came off and he went and took his own life. So... I know obviously they end the podcast on a sad note, but at the end of the day, guys, just to be messages I wanted to get out there if you're struggling at all, you know, talk. You know, just just, just talk. That's all I can say to you is, guys, and, and find someone, find, find a family member or a friend, or sometimes even talking to a stranger helps as well. Uh, but, yeah, it's just really, really sad. And it's, one, it's, a, it's a strange one to take. So it is, and Tony used to love him as a kid too. Tony used to like really look up to him because he was obviously the White Ranger and the Green Ranger, which was the main Rangers of obviously all of the Power Rangers. But strange one, but that was a sad, sad, sad day. And a lot of his ex uh, workmates from the Power Rangers came out, and like is it Amy Jo Johnson, her name is, is her used to play the Pink Ranger. She came out and spoke out. Um, the girl that used to play the Yellow Ranger, unfortunately, she, she passed away years ago in a car crash, which was unfortunately. She passed away actually not long after the film, the last season she was in, apparently, for what I was reading, she was leaving and she was in the car and the car crashed and she died very, very young. Um, and other colleagues have obviously come out, like David, Yo is it David Yost or Yoist, do you call him? He played the Blue Ranger, the guy with the glasses. He came out and spoke about it too, so. It's a strange one. So it is really, really strange. You just don't know what's going through people's heads at the time, guys. You really don't. But, you know, obviously our thoughts and prayers go to the family and obviously his wife and his, his four, I think it's four kids he had, for what I was reading yesterday, it's four kids. So thoughts and prayers obviously go out to the family and, and his, his wife and kids and all at this sad time, so. But guys, before I go, I want to give you one, once again an share how you can get in touch with us here on the podcast. Um, I guarantee you know, Thursday's podcast is going to be a cracker. Got some really good subjects to talk about, plus the channel's back on Wednesday. Happy days. Hallelujah. Tomorrow we can re-upload again. Um, you want to get in touch with the podcast, you know how to do it, guys, by now. Um, if you're new to the podcast, as always, just a quick reminder. Uh, Moor Army Podcast at Yahoo.com. Um, social media, Moor Army YouTube channel on Facebook. Official Matthew Moore on Instagram. Don't forget to give Lewis's wee channel. I forgot to say as well. Lewis's wee YouTube channel as well. He put it in our video yesterday. Uh, just look, search up YouTube. Lewis Moor. L-U-I-S for Lewis Moor. Um, give him a wee subscribe as well guys we're just trying to get him to a thousand subscribers God love him he's working on his wee ass off on his videos at the minute God love him his wee views are gradually climbing but I'm trying to give him a few wee tips to try and get his views back up again God love him he's trying his hardest he really is determined to make a go of his channel he also, he's also released a, a wee t-shirt as well on the Moor Army uh, merch uh, Lewis Moor Gaming <laughs> it's quite a cool wee t-shirt actually all retro writing with like a retro controller and all it looks pretty cool um, yes so uh, yeah the we're on me merchandise for Christmas, guys. Hoodies, t-shirts, you name it. Shopping bags, everything we can think of for Christmas. Uh, men's, women, and kids sizes, all available. Delivered to your door within, what, three, four working days if you live in the UK. And also, if you're abroad, you're talking maybe a week or two, not even two weeks, even a week and a half, maybe the most, for international shipping. Moorarmy.co.uk, get all your merch um, for Christmas and more. Um, also, we'll sell posters, Moor Army posters, and jigsaw puzzles. Jigsaw puzzles. What's that all about? Insane. Uh, Moorarmy.co.uk. Uh, get yourself on there as well. Um, the guy who, I forgot to say earlier on, the guy who actually does the, the, the site to build, obviously the t-shirts and whatever for us, suggested to us about doing sign pictures as well for, for viewers. Um, sign stuff, because I obviously give out autographs all the time and I meet people like sign this for me and most recent one there's a wee guy who got me to sign stuff for him at the ice hockey games where I'm signing his ticket and signing his bits and bobs for him so he was suggesting about doing sign pictures 8 by 10 pictures of me Bergen Lewis why would you want to have a picture of me do you really want to go blind really but 
we've got our stuff on there as well t-shirts hoodies all bits and bobs you can think and they're all like merch we're, we're eventually are going to start doing wristbands and things like that again in the new year so but the christmas merch is pretty cool i like the design of it actually the soldier boots because of the mirror army all covered in like tinsel and christmas lights and then happy christmas and then the mirror army logo awesome love it mirrorarmy.co.uk guys for all your videos as well and all the stuff like that too as well um so that's how you can get in contact with us right i'm gonna go and get this together and get ready because i've got a pretty busy afternoon on today plus brooklyn lewis will be coming home and i'm looking forward to tomorrow about getting all this this youtube channel re back up and again get all the older videos brought back out too as well so once again guys if you're listening to us here on apple uh, music or on spotify thanks for downloading thanks for streaming thanks for listening i appreciate it the views and listens are getting up every week if you're listening to it here on youtube on the mirror army podcast youtube channel please subscribe below uh, and stick around for more podcasts coming up in the coming weeks as well as we're out every tuesday and thursday so until thursday guys for the only podcast where i can be more free as a lot of you all enjoy it there uh thanks for your support yesterday during the instagram stream thanks for all your support here to the podcast and the youtube channel and until thursday i will see you back well i'll see you back on the youtube channel tomorrow wednesday but i'll see you back here on the podcast on thursday so until then i'll see you all then thanks for listening guys